So I've been meaning to do this for a little while now. I've got 26 varieties at last count of Tredescantia. So what I'm going to do is a huge tour today. I'm not going to get too in depth into the cultural requirements of them, otherwise the video will take three weeks. All I'm going to do is show you the Tredescantia and a couple of points to make first. I will also include anything from the common lacy family and the reason for that is that people who collect them will know as well as I do that very often they're sold online with the name Tredescantia even though they're not they might be some other plant from the common lacy family so I'm going to include those and the other thing to note is that again if you are a collector of Tredescantia you'll know that the naming is completely up the swanee so I'll just give you the names that I've got for them at the moment again I could go into such detail over all the different names but I'm not going to because it would take me too long to research it and no doubt it would make for a very boring video. So I'm simply going to show you my Tredescantia and if anything occurs to me at the time that I'm showing it you, I will mention it. So look at this as kind of an A to Z of everything that I own in terms of common lacy family. And it will be also very useful for people who want to do a few trades maybe, or who want to increase their collection. And I'm hoping people will put in the comments any that I've missed out. And bear in mind that lots of these plants that I'm showing you will have other names too. So, you know, you can always put in the comments what you think it's called or what it should be called and so on and so forth so with that said let's get started and we are in so we might as well start with the best one so this one this huge one here is I think probably the biggest in the country I'm going to say it's the biggest in the country and if anybody can refute that claim then please let me know and we'll have a look but at the moment that stands at around or hangs at around I'd say about a meter 20 maybe even a meter and a half and you know I have pruned it so this is Tredescantia Zebrina Red Jewel now a little bit on the name I did say I wasn't going to go too much into the names I understand and again loads of people might refute this this is just the latest information I've read on this, that I understand that Tredescantia Zebrina Red Jewel is actually one that's been treated with PGRs and eventually, as is the case with mine, because this is several years old now, it reverts into Tredescantia Zebrina Burgundy. So that's what this is actually known as. However, you can see it's in great nick, really good form at the moment. And that's because of the way I'm growing it in this hanging bag. And uh, it is actually rooted as the stems go down the bag. So you've not got that situation where you've got these big long stems and you've got all that die back further back in each stem because obviously it's wanting to root as it goes along and it's not being allowed to so there's your answer to it if you want to know that i do have a video all about how i did that one but no doubt i'm going to show you today some that are in really bad condition because we're still in the middle of winter uh, obviously this is the uk we're not in a warm place even though it's a nice sunny day today for once so i'm going to show you some that aren't in quite as good a condition as this one so this one tredescantia red jewel let's move on to the next one so next up this is tredescantia Scantia Maiden's Blush, also occasionally known as Blushing Bride. Great blog by, uh, I think, someone called Avery, who's written in a fantastic research blog. And if you want to know a bit more about that, let me know and I'll send you in the right direction. So this is really Maiden's Blush. It's not Blushing Bride. That is apparently a confusion and a mistake but this is this is the best it looks to be honest it comes like this once a year you get all these lovely pink leaves but you still get this die back down here if you don't let them root as they go and it does look pretty dreadful for the rest of the year I have to say but it's worth keeping for the show that it gives you at this time of year so I keep this one in like a warm area and it still produces these regardless of the fat and no it's not a virus apparently this was induced by scientists it's a, a genetic mutation by injecting some chemical or other yeah, but it is stable so that's maiden's blush let's move on to the next one now i did say i was going to show you some dreadful looking ones this is my nemesis unfortunately uh, Cherescantia fluminensis nanook lilac so if anyone's got one of these nanook lilac varieties you'll be no doubt used to the fact that very often they end up looking dreadful like this 
Uh, I really don't know the answer to it. I have got it in a greenhouse, so the humidity is very high, whether that's it or not. I am currently testing it with some in the house, which I have to say look better than this one. So it does let me believe that maybe the humidity is something to do with it, but I have heard people say they have very high humidity and don't have a problem. So I really don't know the answer to that one, but that's Nanook Lilac, a beautiful one if you can get it to grow well for you. Okay, two more that aren't looking great at this time of year, and I'm just in the process of restarting them. So this is Tredescantia tricolor minima. So at the moment, there's not much in terms of tricolor going on. It was looking even worse than it is looking at the moment. And what I tend to do at this time of year is cut everything back, which is what I've done. So you can still see some of the kind of dead and dying leaves on there. This will look fantastic in about a month's time. Uh, this is what happens with Tredescantia tricolor. Minima, I believe, was one, again, just a normal tricolour that was treated with PGRs uh, to reduce the leaf size. However, I don't think this was treated with PGRs because I've had this now for three years. It's never turned into like a large leaved plant. I do pinch out all these little green leaves as well to try and promote more of the variegation. And sometimes it completely reverts to green. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If you take cuttings of these green leaves, I'll show you what you end up with. So over here we have a fully reverted Tredescantia tricolour. So this is what happens if you take tricolour cuttings of the green leaves, you end up with this. I actually quite like it. I don't mind it at all. And it's certainly a lot more robust and easier to grow. Um, but whether green is your thing, I don't know. But that's what happens. So that's another Tredescanti. I've never seen it on sale like this in this form, but probably because people don't really want it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some cuttings from Tredescantia tricolour from the variegated leaves and see what we end up with there. Okay, so down here, these are cuttings from Tredescantia tricolour, all in various stages. So these will make my new Tredescantia tricolour minima plants. And as you can see, there's not a great deal in terms of green reversion there there's that one there we should pinch that one out shouldn't we while we're here uh, but you can see i will end up with some nice plants once the weather improves and the light levels improve so again these are really Tredescantia tricolor or tricolor minima depending on which is correct there i don't really know so let's move on to the hot house where i've got the majority of my Tredescantia collection Okay, we're over in the hot house now. So this is a reasonably new one for me. This is quadricolor, Tredescantia zebrina quadricolor, and it does have four colors. And I do believe that this is stable. So you could start off with like just a green leaf, a fully green leaf, and it will still produce all these colors for you, the pinks and the creams and all the various things going on there. So it's quite a large plant, this one. Um, there's some lovely pink on there and what I keep doing is chopping them off and popping them back in the pot there and right next to it this is one of those that I was telling you about that isn't really a Tredescantia very often sold as one so this is Calicia Rosato either Pink Lady or Pink Panther I'm sure there's some story behind that so you can see what I've got going on here I've got lots of pink in the middle and I've got these greener leaves coming out the side I'll have to look that up I'm not so sure whether I should really pinch those out probably and maybe it's not getting enough light maybe Maybe that's something to do with it so as I say I'm not really talking about the culture I'm just going through them all so this one again another one from the common lacy family this is Jabasis Jose Puig and this is the first time really that it's giving me quite a nice bushy plant it's beautiful close up when you look at the leaves with the lime green edging on there it's like a real dark purple or a burgundy and then you've got all the trailing stems coming out but it's slow it's slower than all my other Tredescantias and I really do need to keep making sure I pop cuttings back in the pot to really bush that out I think it's going to look nice when that happens up here we've got Tredescantia Hijar Baru uh, this is a colour changer I believe I quite like this one and it, it's only green at the moment but when you get the sun on it and I've not actually had the sun on it yet because I've not had it long enough I think I bought it at the end of summer last year so I'm hoping that I get some of those different colours on this hijau baru. And it's quite hurry. Again, you know, we're, we're at that time of year where they really will start to take off soon once the sun really comes out and shows us a little bit more of what it can do. So let's move on to the next one. So over here we've got Tredescantia tiana. Uh, the name for it is Calicia gentlii elegans, which I believe is the more correct name. I have had people tell me that it is prone to these brown markings and I have got a few appearing 
not really sure why these are kept at 17 stroke 18 degrees celsius so it's certainly not too cold for them but it's not holding it back is it it is beginning to really take over this little area you know it's shooting off in all directions this one is a fairly new one for me this is Tredescantia pallida pale puma so this is actually a cross between you know the purple one Tredescantia purpurea uh, along with Silamontana which I didn't show you I do have Silamontana over in the other greenhouse I forgot to show you that as you can see I've only got one cutting from that so that very soon will need snipping off and sticking back in there so that's uh, a mixture between those. Actually, I'm not going to show you the Silantana simply because it really doesn't do well in the really humid environment of my greenhouse. It likes to be very, very dry. So here we've got Tradescantia albiflora variegata. This one was quite pricey. Nice little sweet white flower there. Pretty slow going. Again, that's going to need propagating and sticking back in the pot to give me something a little bit more um, of an impact than what we've got going on there. So this one is Flu Tradescanti Fluminensis Albo Vitata or Quicksilver and it is pretty quick. It's going off in several directions there. A little bit of a stripe on that one. It's okay. Quite like it. It's not horrendous. Uh, a small one here at the moment. Calicia Navicularis. I've had that one about two, three months. That's just beginning to take off. Again, doesn't really look like a Tredescantia um, because it isn't. <laughs> it's a Calicia, but it's still the same family. And you might want to think about collecting that one. And over here, we have no label in this one. I think this one is just another Nanook Lilac, to be honest. Uh, behind it is a nice one. So this one is Calicia. Again, some mix up over the name. Let's try and do this with one hand. So this is Congester or Soconusensis. Soco Soconusensis. And it's something to do with a dragon. Dragon's tail. Okay, and you can see it does indeed look like a dragon's tail. I'm going to leave it a little bit. And then once it's another few centimetres tall, I'm going to propagate it. Got some... Uh, nice kind of side shoots coming off there so by propagating it we should encourage those side shoots and moving on we have the first of the rosette forming ones here so this is Spathacea citara again I've not had it that long but it should it's got a nice little pink stripe in it I have seen one uh, similar to this I think it's like the purpurea but it does have like a pink stripe up the middle so if anybody has that one I wouldn't mind that one uh, fairly new one again, Calicia Golden. So that's very similar to the other one I showed you with the pink panther or pink lady, but this one is supposedly golden. It's a little bit kind of lime greeny, isn't it? Over here in the darkness, we have Albiflora Sweetness. Again, I really like this one because it's similar to Nanook Lilac, but it doesn't seem to give you the same trouble. Unusually, actually, for plants, usually better for me anyway, at coping with the various conditions, it tends to be these hybrids that I struggle with for some reason, which is not usually the case with hybrids. Okay, so let's move on. So this one over here is multicolour discolour. Again, not had it that long, but you can see. I didn't like this at first, to be honest, but I think it's one of those that looks better in real life than it actually does on camera. Moving on, this one is Purple Joy. Again, I think Purple Joy is actually burgundy. Tredescantia Zabrina burgundy, treated with PGRs. Now this one stays small, as it would do if it was treated with PGRs for months, and it's now beginning to take off. So that would tell me that the PGRs have worn off and it's now going to become burgundy. I also have over here, this is the one, one that was actually bought as Blushing Bride, but as you can see, it's exactly the same as Maiden's Blush. So I was kind of done there because I didn't know at the time, and I'm sure I won't be the only one. I very often find that these things are for sale online, and the same seller can go and put different names on them because they know what you're doing. They know you're collecting them, so they put different names on, so you think you're getting different plants, but they're not. I have a whole list of websites that gives me information on the names, and I always make sure, from now on anyway, that I will consult those to make sure that I'm not going to be done, as it were. Over here, another favourite. So this one is Tredescantia fluminensis Oreo Verigata Yellow Hill. A really nice thing, very pretty. Um, 
again, like all Chodoscanti, really easy to root, wants to root in anything, wants to root in the air, wants to root in metal, wants to root in wood, <laughs> whatever it comes across, it wants to root in it. Um, I find moss is a really good media if you want to propagate your Tredoscantia, but having said that, they'll propagate in anything. You can stick them in water, you can stick them in any just media, just stick them straight in the pot and they will propagate really well for you. And down here we have Tredoscantia purpurea. I'll just drag that one out. Now I had absolutely loads of this stuff and it just grows so quickly. So I had to chop it back. Obviously we're coming out of winter pretty soon another couple of weeks so I really needed a little bit of space so that's purpurea and it was all over the place and I think there's another one under there somewhere if you can kind of see it there it is purpurea there's purpurea just popping through the racking there so that's Tredoscantia purpurea Okay, was that really 26 varieties of Tredoscanti? I think I might have miscounted. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will go through and count them all for me. So that's all the Tredoscanti I own, all in various stages. Some of them looking great, some of them looking not very great, but I'm sure they will do once the light levels increase and the day lengths increase as time goes on. And I'm sure you're looking at some of them thinking, that's not such a name, that's something else. So again, write that in the comments. It's great to kind of pool all our knowledge on these things and see if we can come up with some actual answers. And if you're interested in a trade, just send me a little message. My email is available there on my channel, on the about section. And I think that'll do. So if you've got any questions or if you are interested in Tredoscantia, make yourselves known. There's not many of us about and we need to stick together. And by the way, if you want to know how to create the great big long hanging Tredoscantia Zebrina, I'll put the card right at the end for you to see and click on and have a look at. And that'll do for now. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye.